Hello everyone and welcome back to Weird Kindred. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple six strand braid that you can use to decorate your kit. This braid was found in the Skolderham grave. It was found on the neckline and the cuffs of the tunic. It takes you about five minutes to learn, maybe less. Dead easy. Give it a go. Come on. Today we're going to make three braids using the same simple six strand method. The first one you can see at the top there is made of a chunky, softly spun roving yarn. Brilliant for drawstrings, things like that. The second one down is a three colour version made out of a very fine yarn. The third one, the single colour green, shows the same yarn but duplicated so that there are four threads in every strand. All you really need for making this braid is wool and scissors. I've got two different grades of wool here, different thicknesses to show you a couple of different ways the braid can look when it's finished, but obviously you'll just be working with your chosen thread. Scissors always a must. I've got my trusty chopstick up there, which I use for at home braiding. I'll show you how what I do with that later. And I'll also show you another technique using a simple loop of wool that you can use to make a fixed point to start your braid. Okay folks, we're now ready to fix our threads to begin our braid. Now this, I'm going to show you three different ways that you can do this. If you've got a lovely fixed point like I have here on my tapestry frame, absolutely no problem. Simply make a loop, pull it through. That gives you a really nice steady place to start your braid. number one. Number two, if you are working in a place where you haven't got a nice fixed point to work with there are two methods that you can use. I use quite often at home a chopstick. They're dead handy. I put a bit of blue tack on each end to stop them being too pointy and I hold them between my knees. Dead easy. Same again. Just make your loop. Pull your threads through. And a nice secure point. I'm going to tuck that in there just so that we can work from it today. The third and final method that I'm going to show you is the one that I use when I am in the LHG and I don't have a fixed point to work from. In this case you get a piece of thread that you're not bothered about wasting. Something fairly chunky is handy because it's reusable. You make a loop. You tuck that loop around your foot and when you pull back you can keep your tension using the threads as, that you're working and you have a nice fixed point. Now obviously it's a bit difficult to show you working off my foot so for now I'm just going to attach this here so that it provides us with something to work from and you'll see when I do this braid how that functions. So we're going to fix our final loops in exactly the same way as we have with the other two methods. Open up the loop, bring them through. Now we're ready to start braiding. I've begun with this thicker wool just to show you. You split your threads into two sections, three each side. You're going to start working from the left. You're going to take this first thread over two. You now have four this side. The second half, you're going to take this outer thread from the right over three and back to the middle. And that literally is it. Over two. Over three. Tighten up at the top between each section. It's only really necessary at the beginning because this braid will tighten pretty well by itself as you go along, as long as you keep the tension on these threads. Over two, over three, over two, over three, and so on. Now you know the basic technique, but don't go anywhere. 
because all through this video I'm going to be dropping in hints and tips as I go along and I don't want you to miss any. Now we've worked up some of the braid, I'm just stop here to show you. As you go down, with each swipe you can see I run my hands all the way along and what I'm doing there is just making sure that the threads aren't tangling up at the ends and braiding themselves into a knot at the bottom because with quite a few of the braids that I'm going to show you this happens so just keep checking as you go down that you've got all of your braid, all of your threads nicely separated. I've slowed this section right down for you so you can see how my fingers move while I'm making the braid. My thumb and my index finger stabilise and manipulate the threads. My middle finger hooks the thread to bring it to the other side of the braid. And my ring finger and little finger stabilise the braid as I'm bringing my hands down. Stay tuned to see how you can use this technique to make two more very different braids. Okay, now this is the second style of this braid I want to show you. This is exceedingly fine thread, so it's a little bit harder to see, but the principles are fairly easy to explain. So if you want a nice even braid, you're going to start with pairs of colours working outwards. So you've got your two red in the middle, two orangey the side, your two green on the outside. The method is exactly the same as I showed you before. You're going to come over two, and then over three, over two, over three. Each time you'll end up with symmetrical colours on either side. And as I carry on working this, you'll see the pattern start to appear. It is exceedingly fine. Continue to work this until your pattern emerges. You can see here that I've got my chopstick attached to my tapestry frame. Just imagine holding that between your knees or you can tuck it just under the inside of your knees on either side as well to make it a little bit easier. When you're working with braid this fine, you will find that it wants to twist. But as long as you're keeping your passes regular and your tension good, just through that, just nice and tensioned well as you come down, eventually you'll be absolutely fine. And when you come to sew it, onto your kit. You can soak it, iron it, press it, do all sorts of things to get it to lay nice and flat again. That's not much of a problem with the larger yarns but with something this fine you will see, you can see just there, it's coming out nicely but it does want to go that way because of the nature of a, an even stranded braid with even sides. It's never going to be completely symmetrical as you make it. Now you can see that this braid, while gorgeous and delicate, also takes a lot longer to work up than the first example I showed you using the chunkier yarn, which is fairly self-explanatory. However, there is another method if you only have fine yarn that I will show you next. Now for example number three, I'm going to show you how to make the six strand braid with multiple threads in each strand. The example from Skolderheim had two threads in each strand because my yarn is quite fine that I'm working with. I'm going to be using four strands in each braid as you can see here. Now trust me on this, if you're using multiple strands, make a knot in the bottom. <laughs> Ask me how I know. So to begin, you want to get everything nice and straight. Now you can see at the top there I've affixed this to my loop that I showed you as method number three for securing your thread earlier. Method is exactly the same as I've showed you before. Come over two and then from the right come over three. It can be quite difficult when you've got these multiple threads. So here I'm trying to separate these out again to make my next pass and it wants to stick so just check from the bottom work your way up 
if you need to separate them out again. So you're working in exactly the same way as before. Come over two, keep your tension nice and even as you go along. If you're getting a little bit confused there, just come down to the bottom, make sure you've got the right bunch of threads and you're away again. The comforting thing is, in a lot of the examples that we've got from the Viking Age, there are mistakes, particularly with, with tablet weave as well. If you're ever having a go at that and you're worried, please don't be, because Viking people messed it up too. If you're anything like me, you're going to get interrupted when you're crafting and need to leave the work nice and safe for a little while. So if I show you here, you can see which white end is the front. If you flip it, you can see a definite difference where the threads are all coming from the middle at the back. And you can see a lovely V at the front, so you know which side's which. So if you need to leave it, what you're going to do is bunch your threads each side. Just a gentle loop knot like that and that will keep everything where you want it until you're ready to come back to it. Now let's go and have a look at the finished braids. One, two and three. Now let's have a look at each one in a bit more depth. You can really see here what a difference the colour, weight and ply of your chosen yarn will make to your final braid. The yarn I've used for this braid is very softly spun, which means it's going to felt together over time. Now that's great for things like drawstrings, stuff like that, but it may not be your first choice for your kit decoration. I dyed this wool with walnut husks forage from my garden, and look out over the summer because I'll be doing a video on how to do that yourself at home as well. Next we have our exceedingly fine three colour braid. Again, each strand has only one thread, but the different colours make the design pop a lot more. You can see the pattern very clearly on this one. My daughter claimed this as soon as she saw it and she wants it for the ties for the top of her next tunic. And last but not least, we have our six strand braid with multiple threads in each strand. The worsted spun wool means that it's going to be tougher and much more hard wearing than the roving yarn example I showed you at the beginning. And this was the style that I chose when I was making the braid for my Skoldham tunic. Plain green for the neckline and multicoloured for the cuffs, as the original craftsperson did. Thanks for watching everybody. If you've got any questions, please pop them down in the comments or come and find me on Facebook. If you've had fun with this simple braid, check out my Cords and Braids playlist, where you'll find a variety of different authentic cords and braids you can use for your kit, including the 12-strand Skolderham belt braid. Happy braiding, folks!